everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cute zip around notions pouch. It's got a nice little pocket right here for like an embroidery hoop and then several pockets here, here, and then I did do some fun vinyl pockets here and here. Now if you don't want to do vinyl, you can totally substitute the vinyl for fabric and it will still be just as cute, but I am going to show you how to install this zipper so that it goes all the way around so you can keep all your notions safe and secure. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. So here are the supplies for this project and everything will be linked in the description box below this video along with a written PDF pattern if you would prefer that. But exact measurements for everything will be in the description box below the video. So make sure to check there. But you will need some, um, I, this is just a medium to heavyweight interfacing. You can use quilt batting or uh, whatever kind of interfacing you prefer. You'll need some fabric for your lining, some fabric for your outside three different pocket fabrics. You're also going to be needing some of this clear vinyl and this is just a medium gauge vinyl. I don't have the exact gauge because this is just in my um, stash but it's just not easily terrible. I can tell you that much um, but it's not so thick that you can't sew through it. And then you're also going to have to have a few different pieces of binding. So I've got three for my shorter pockets. I've got one for this side pocket over here. And then you do have one piece that is only two inches wide. That is going to be going down this center section. So just make sure you keep this one that's two and a half inches and this one that's two inches separate. And then you're also going to need some binding to go around the outside of your bag. And then you're going to need at least a 20 inch zipper. I'm just using this polyester zipper. They're my favorite kind because you can cut them um, and sew over them and all that without breaking needles. You can use a longer one, but you definitely want to have it be at least 20 inches or it won't make it around your bag. I'm also going to probably be using my 505 temporary adhesive just to kind of hold things in place. And then you'll just need some basic sewing supplies. I think that's it for this project. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're just going to start off by preparing some of our pieces. I like to get all my pressing kind of out of the way at first. So I've got my two and a half inch binding strips and all the ones that are two and a half inches, I'm just going to fold them wrong sides together and just press them. And I did that same thing with these long ones. Now for the outer binding, you basically need a piece that's two and a half inches wide by 46 inches long. Um, I was using a fat quarter, so I actually cut four of them. I just sewed them end to end and then I just pressed these seams open so that I have this nice long piece of binding. And then I went ahead and just pressed it in half, wrong sides together. And I'm just going to go ahead and set that aside, but this is now prepared and ready for us to use when we need it. And then you're going to do the same thing with your little short pieces. These ones again are two and a half inches wide by about five and three quarters inches. And so you're going to need three of those. And I just press those right sides together. And then the one little piece of, um, it looks like binding, but it's not. This one is two inches by eight inches. And I just pressed each of the long edges in so that they meet in the middle like this and just pressed it. And now we're just going to set this aside. This is actually going to go down the center of our bag to kind of cover up some raw edges. So we can set that one and the long pieces of binding aside. And then we have these ones for our pockets and we're ready to go there. The next thing I did was just take all of my pockets. They're all five inches wide. This one is six inches long and I just folded it in half wrong sides together and pressed. This one is 11 inches long. Again, I just folded it in half and pressed. And then this one is 16 inches long and I folded that one in half and pressed. And then as you'll see, they'll kind of stack up in a nice, neat little order like this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just take these pockets over and I'm just going to run a top stitch along this top folded edge, the raw edge is down here, and I'm just doing that to give it a more finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll meet you back here. Now I'm going to go ahead and line all these pockets up nice and straight and I'm making sure the raw edge down here lines up with the raw edges. And then if you want, you can leave these pockets just totally open. If you'd like, you can sew a line down the middle so you've got two smaller pockets. You can actually sew several lines down the middle if you want places for pencils or knitting needles or something, you know, a skinnier kind of crafting tool. I am going to go ahead and just kind of pin these together just so they sort of don't slide around while I'm sewing my lines on. And I'll probably use this for knitting, so I think I am going to do some skinnier um, uh, strips and I am going to backstitch once I get up here just to give this pocket a little bit more structure. All 
All right, I just did two strips here. I figured I could use these for pins or maybe knitting needles. And then I did leave one a little bit wider um, so that I can put a pair of small scissors in there. Next thing we're gonna do is take our two and a half inch by eight inch strip. And again, like I said, I pressed it right sides together. I'm going to line up those raw edges along this left side of our little pocket unit here. And we're gonna take that to our sewing machine and using a quarter inch seam allowance, so right down this edge. Then I'm going to flip it over to the back side like this and then just stitch right along that open edge just to attach binding so we have kind of a nice finished edge here. So here is our finished left hand pocket. We can kind of set that one aside now. And I'm going to grab my three pieces of this vinyl. Now, if you don't like to use a vinyl, you're welcome to do this using um, fabric instead. I kind of like the vinyl because I like pockets I can see through. Um, so totally up to you. But we're going to put binding on all the tops of all three of these pieces of vinyl. So again, I've just taken my little pieces and folded them in half and pressed them wrong sides together. We're going to line up that raw edge along the top side of this vinyl, stitch one quarter inch around, um, down that edge, Again, just like we did with the other pocket, we're going to flip it over to the back side and stitch it down again. And then that way the tops of these little vinyl pouches will be nice and finished off. So I'm gonna do that with all three of my pieces of vinyl. Now sewing with vinyl is just like sewing with fabric except that it's a little bit slippery. So just take your time with this and go slow. Also, once you poke a hole through the vinyl with your sewing machine needle, it's not going to kind of recover like if you were to pick out the stitches. So just be really careful with this. Go slow and try and get it right the first time. But if you don't, don't worry about it. All right, again, we're going to just fold that piece up around the back side and then stitch that down again. All right, and then we have our piece. This will be the back side, um, and we're gonna repeat that on all three of our pieces of vinyl. All right, so here are all my pockets. This is my left side pocket and my three vinyl pockets. And like I said, the kind of ugly side is what you're gonna wanna put towards the back, and then you can keep the nice pretty side up front. And if your vinyl is like a little bit crinkled or folded because it's been sitting in your stash like mine, I do have a little tip for you. You do not want to iron the vinyl because it will just melt onto your iron and you'll have a big mess. But if you lay another piece of fabric, even maybe double up a piece of fabric on top of this, press it, and then just let it sit until it cools nice and flat, then your vinyl will be nice and flat and you won't have melted it or anything with your iron. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take all of our little pocket pieces. We're just gonna set them aside for a second while we prepare our main bag piece. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just take my fabric off here. And I have just a nice kind of um, medium to heavyweight interfacing in this one. I wanted it to have a little bit of structure. You could also use quilt batting or whatever. And I'm not sure if you can tell here, but I actually didn't have a piece large enough for this. So I just took it to my other machine and just did a nice tight zigzag stitch all the way around this, um, down this edge just to combine these two pieces. So it's a great way to use up leftover scraps. Small projects like this doesn't really matter. It's not gonna hurt our bag at all, but now we have a piece that's the right size. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my lining piece and lay that right side down on the table and then I'm gonna place this on top of it like so and then I'm just gonna flip it over just make sure everything's nice and lined up and then using my 505 spray I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put a couple bits of glue on here this is just really to hold things in place while we're doing all of our sewing. This project is small enough that you don't need to really quilt it if you don't want to. You certainly can if you do want to, but you don't have to. You could also use fusible fleece for this project. All right, now that we've got our lining attached to our interfacing, we're gonna go ahead and attach the vinyl pockets. And so we're gonna take our first vinyl pocket here and I'm just gonna place this on my table lining up my edge with some of my um, markings here. And we're gonna place our first pocket with the top of the binding one inch down from the top of our little pouch here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use a wonder clip to clip this in place. If you use pins, you'll poke holes in your vinyl and you'll be able to see those later. Um, I am gonna go ahead and just use my ruler to make sure this first one is straight all the way across. And I will use a pin for this one because I can't get my wonder clip in there, but I'm gonna pin it through the binding 
portion, not through the vinyl down here. Um, that way it'll kind of hold it in place, but I won't make any holes in my vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew it down this right edge over here and then along the bottom edge. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll add our other two vinyl pockets. All right, so here's our first pocket and we just sewed right along this edge and it's gonna be kind of hard to see while you're sewing, so just make sure that you go slow. And then we're gonna take our second one. Now this first one was about one inch down. This second one needs to be approximately two and a half inches down from the top of this binding. All right, so here's my binding at this stitch at this inch mark, we're gonna go down two inches and then just about a half an inch and I am kind of eyeballing it. Just make sure that this binding covers up your stitch line from your previous piece. And this one you can use a ruler on if you like or I'll probably just hold it on here and just make sure that it's staying even with this top one. And again, I'm just gonna go down this side and across the bottom. All right, we've got our first two pockets on and then the last one we have to do is our bottom pocket and I'm not even gonna measure this one, I'm just lining it up along this side and bottom edge and I will again run a stitch down the side and across the bottom just to secure this last vinyl pocket. All right, so we've got all three of our vinyl pockets attached now. Now it's time to do the placement for this left side pocket. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and line up my edge of my bag over here with my ruler. And then I'm gonna place my binding approximately one inch in from this edge over here. Just make sure your pockets are going the right way so that you've got pockets this way and same over here. Then we can go ahead and clip this one in place just so it doesn't move around on us. Next, we're gonna take our piece that is two inches wide by eight inches tall. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I pressed both of the long sides in so they meet in the center. And I'm gonna go ahead and place that right down the center of this. Now, if you would like, you can mark it with a pin or whatever just so that you make sure that you get it on there straight. And I am gonna kinda of pin this guy in place just so it doesn't move around on me as I go. But we're gonna basically take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right down this edge so that we're catching all three of our vinyl pockets. And then I'm gonna sew right down this edge so we're catching the pockets on this side. All right, so here is our finished inside panel. I'm gonna flip that over and do the same thing with the outside fabric. And I always like to line up my fabric first and then fold it back and spray it. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and just set that aside for a second. And next we're gonna be working on our zipper. Okay, so I've cut a piece that is two and a half inches long, so you're gonna wanna do that by one and three quarters inch wide, and that is because I have a one inch zipper. I wanted to give myself a quarter inch on each side to fold in, plus just a little bit extra so that my zipper fits nice and snug inside our little tab here. So I'm gonna start off by folding in two edges by a quarter of an inch. Now this is the two and a half inch length right here, like so. And then we're gonna fold in these long sides also by a quarter of an inch. And it's kind of finicky, so just be patient with it. You can take it over to your ironing board and press it so it's a little bit more accurate. And then we're gonna place our zipper inside our little pocket here, lining up the end of our zipper with the center of our pocket. And then we're just gonna fold that up and over so we have a cute little tab for our zipper. And I'm just gonna pull it out so my zipper stop is just on the outside of this. I don't wanna accidentally sew through that when I'm trying to attach it. Then I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew down this short edge across the zipper and then down this other edge. And just for symmetry, I may even sew across this bottom folded edge, but you don't have to. So now that our backing is on, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to the other side and we're gonna round these corners. I think it's a little bit easier for the zipper and the binding for this particular project. So I'm just gonna find something that is a decent kind of rounded corner that I can use as my template. And actually, I get a lot of questions about this one. This is the quarter inch tape from Cluck Cluck Sew. You can get it from Fat Quarter Shop. I will link it in the description box below, but this is usually what you see on my machine and it helps guide you when you're um, sewing and quilting. So I'm just gonna use that and I'm just gonna take that and just using a friction erasable marker here, just trace these rounded corners on all four corners. It doesn't go on the 
vinyl quite as good, but that's okay. You get the idea. And there we go. And then I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to cut that off. All right, now that my corners are all nice and rounded, we're good to go there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pouch and I'm gonna fold it in half and just line up all these edges to make sure I know where my center point is. And this is gonna be important when you go to add your zipper. So I'm just gonna take a pin and just stick it right in this crease where my center is, just so I know where my halfway mark is. And then I can open it back up. And it should, if you put all of this on straight, it should be pretty much right in the middle of your center strip here. Next, we're gonna take our zipper and we're gonna have it right side up. And we've got our little tab down here at the end. And we're gonna go ahead and start pinning it in place. And so you want it right side up with the kind of right side of your zipper along the raw edge of your pouch. And the left side of your zipper will be kind of going in towards the center and I'm just gonna fold this back just a hair so that we don't have a raw edge on there. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up with my um, pin here. Just kind of right next to that pin and I'll just put a wonder clip to keep that in place. Like so. And now that we have it going the right direction with our zipper pull on top, I can unzip my zipper and get the rest of the zipper out of the way. I just find it's a little bit more helpful to do it that way. That way you make sure you don't get anything twisted. And then we're just going to go ahead and clip this around the rest of the bag, making sure that we don't twist our zipper at all. And then you just kind of have to ease it around this curved edge. It'll be a little bit easier when we get it to the sewing machine. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of pin it in place. All right, and now we can just kind of leave the rest of this flopping. We're gonna go ahead and making sure that we don't twist it, bring it up to the top and do the exact same thing around this side of the bag. So again, I'm gonna just fold it over just a smidge just try and make sure it's equal on both sides. You just want to make sure your zipper is centered. Otherwise, when you go to zip up your pouch, it'll be all wonky and it won't look good. And then you'll send me an email and it'll be bad. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish zipping or er, pinning this on. All right, and now we have our zipper in place. It should look relatively centered to you. We're gonna go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and just sew all along this edge. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop sewing right here so that we have our little tab kind of flapping in the breeze there, and then we can finish sewing on the rest of the zipper. Alright, so here is our zipper sewn on now and now what I like to do is go ahead and close my bag and just double check my zipper and just make sure that I got it on nice and straight and that my pouch looks like it's straight. If you sew the zipper on crooked at all, your pouch will actually, let me see if I can show you here. If it's crooked, your pouch will sit more like this. Um, and so if that's happening to you, it's okay. Just open it back up, seam rip it out and mark your center point and start over again. So you just wanna make sure that you've got it nice and centered and it zips up properly. And then we're ready to move on to our next step. So we're gonna go ahead and take our binding that we had. And like I showed at the beginning of the video, I just pressed it wrong sides together in half. I found it easier with this zipper one to actually add it to the outside of the project first. So I'm gonna go ahead and have my tail of my binding coming off to my right. That's just the way I like to do it. I've got my raw edges lined up with the raw edge of the top of my bag here. And I'm just gonna stick a little wonder clip here so that when I bring it over to my machine, I'm not moving it around. Um, but I'm gonna leave this tail open. I'm gonna start sewing right here. So I'll backstitch right here, and then we'll attach our binding all the way around. And then I'll show you how to finish off this raw tail. And then we'll flip it over and stitch it onto the other side. And I can feel my zipper here, so you just want to kind of be aware of where your zipper is as you're going. Really, mostly it's around the corners. Right here you should be fine, so just pay attention as you're going to around the corners that you're not sewing through your zipper teeth. So I'm just going to add this right to the edge here, and I can feel the zipper teeth kind of running right along the edge of my zipper, or my 
press her foot here. And then I'm just gonna ease this fabric around this corner. It's gonna be a little bit wonky, but it's okay. Okay, and then we're gonna just finish adding it in the same fashion. Now when we get to this zipper pull, we don't want to sew over that. So I'm gonna tuck that straight up like this. And I do like to just make sure that my sides are folded nicely because it will get kind of in that stitch line. So just make sure that's out of your way. And then you can keep going. All right, so we've sewn all the way around our binding except for our tails here, and we're just gonna go ahead and do this like we always do. I'm going to lay them nice and flat and just overlap the two pieces by a quarter of an inch, and you can measure this or you can eyeball it. I tend to like to eyeball it, and so that looks like about a quarter of an inch to me. So I'm just gonna put this down here on my line. There we go. So I just kinda line it up there. I can see my line right there, and then I'll just chop it off so it's basically straight and then we're going to take these two pieces and just lay them next to each other like this and when you have a shorter piece like this I find it easier to fold that in half and we're going to go ahead and just fold this open so they're nice and lined up and we know we didn't get any twist you can also stick a pin in here if you're worried about twisting it you'll know right away if you did it right or wrong um, if we hold it here and open it up you can see they open up properly so that's just my little trick, but I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine now, and I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch down this seam, and then I'll just finger press this seam open, and then I'll go ahead and flip my binding around to the other side, and we'll finish adding it, and then we'll be done. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, and as you can see, it's laying all nice and flat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just press this, finger press this open, and then now we can go ahead and just finish sewing it on. All right, now our binding is completely sewn to our outside of our bag. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it over to the lining side. And then I'm just gonna take the binding here and just fold it over like so. And now, as you can see, we can see our zipper, so we're not gonna be accidentally sewing over it. I just think it's a little bit easier to do it this way on these size pieces with the zipper in here. Just makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew all the way around now to attach my binding to the other side. All right guys, so here is our finished project. As you can see, that was really fun and easy. And then you can just put whatever craft supplies you would like inside this little pouch and you're good to go. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention, a couple of tips I forgot to say before I started sewing, is for the binding, it's a lot easier if you cut your binding strips on the bias of the fabric. That means a diagonal rather than with the grain, so perpendicular to the grain. You wanna cut it on a diagonal. That makes it getting around these corners a lot easier because it'll stretch nicely around those. I forgot to mention that. Also, if you have some kind of a tool like a stiletto or a, most of the time I'll just actually use my seam ripper, you can use that to kind of push this zipper out of the way um, as you're going around these corners as well and that way you won't accidentally um, sew over it. If you do sew over it, don't panic, it's not a big deal. Just pick those little stitches right around that corner out, re-add your binding and you're good to go. So that's it for this project. The last thing to do is to just fill it with fun goodies, zip it all up and you're ready to go. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As you can see, it was pretty easy. I think the hardest part is obviously adding this zipper and then just making sure you can kind of get around these corners. And then of course I used fabric on this side and vinyl like I said on this side. If you don't want to use the vinyl or you don't have it, that's totally fine. You can substitute regular fabric for these pockets as well and it will be just as cute. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making more fun projects for you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. 
you're ready to get started with this tutorial, let's get, shoot. Lock on the window until new car. Shut it. Just like give me like 10 seconds. And it helps guide you. Oh. <laughs> Tear it, uh, stitch it. What's it called? Um, I think I am going to, what am I gonna do? I can't see. 